This attempt at showing you some of the mechanics surrounding the shoulder, rib cage, and anterior shoulder muscle relationship, uh, especially the pectoralis major, this is a tough thing to see. So we're going to do our best to do it on this little camera thing. It's so much easier in class where you can see it from five different angles if you want to. Um, and not bound by, well, there's the camera and i got to try to show it. So here's the thing. First of all, your prerequisite knowledge, you must know that muscles pull between their two points of attachment. And when you have a fan-shaped muscle like this, there's a splay or an array of direction that this muscle is pulling or that its collective fibers are pulling. And that relationship with this plane of motion, if for example you can tell I'm doing kind of a, a movement like this, where the upper arm <clears throat> is moving in this plane, what some people might call the transverse or horizontal plane of the shoulder. So from your point of view, you might be able to see that some of these fibers aren't actually pulling in this plane. Others on this end aren't either. There are a few fibers that are pulling pretty much in the plane, and there might be a resultant of these uh, extreme fibers out here. But for the most part, from this angle, you might be able to see that there's a relatively small moment arm, a small or relatively inefficient angle of pull for generating motion around the shoulder joint. And part of that is due to the structure I'm showing you right now. If you've ever seen someone who has a really thick rib cage, and thick rib cages aren't just thicker like this, they're typically not so much thicker at the top, the thickness comes from a change in angle. And if you can see that right there, how when this person's rib cage is thicker, their angle of their fanning of their pec, the plane of which the fanning occurs, becomes a little more consistent with the plane of motion. And that changes, maybe you can see from this point of view, that changes the angle of pull of the fibers themselves and creates much more mechanical uh, efficiency. Better moment arms slash force angles. So this person typically is also much stronger. You know what kind of drives this home as an analogy? When people cheat on a bench press, how do they cheat? They lift up their butt. Power lifters playing by the rules keep their butt down, but they do arch their back as much as they can. And arching their back is another way of enabling this increased sternal angle. Now, genetics is a huge factor here, and very rarely will a power lifter of any degree of success have a flat rib cage. Most of them have a barrel rib cage, to use that more colloquial term. But that barrel rib cage does a couple things for them. A, they don't have to lower the bar as far to touch their chest. B, their arm is roughly straight out to the side when the bar does touch the chest, and they have a much better angle for pec um, influence on that plane of motion. There are other things that any average person can do, even if you have a normal rib cage that from the side looks kind of like that. If you exhale, inhale, exhale, if you exhale as you press, the way most recommendations uh, um, uh, in, insinuate you should, um, you're very often losing mechanical advantage of your pectoralis major. If you're protracting as you press, then you're also losing the angle of pull of that pectoralis major. So all of those things create <clears throat> um, teaching cues, instructional uh, influences that a professional can offer, as well as understanding how to bias or manipulate those cues based on the structure of the individual. And along the way, some people are built for bench presses and some people aren't. Some people are going to feel all anterior shoulder because of their relatively thin rib cage and how that influenced their ability. Um, retraction of the scapula is another big factor. You'll find most powerlifters working really hard to increase retraction because when you retract, you increase the anterior to posterior distance here, which further changes that angle. So maintaining some degree of retraction, and for some people they do it pretty ex excessively, and other people do it moderately, but maintaining that and not protracting throughout the course of the movement can be a mechanical influence. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a couple people I'd like for you to see in real life, and how this shows up as an influence in how they perform the exercise. <clears throat> 